Well, good morning, everyone, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Why, India? It's Father's Day? Yes, it's Father's Day. Fathers, you should be rejoicing this morning. I tell you that I am glad because we get to celebrate today and thank God for making us fathers. On today, I want to do something a little different. We're going to um, push aside our short series sermons out of the book of Habakkuk. And I want to talk about the responsibility of a godly father. So, hey, fathers, get your Bible, get your smartphone, get your socks, your ties that you normally get for um, Father's Day as we get ready to dive into the word of God. I'll be back with you in a moment. Yes, seated in man. 
Father God, we thank you again for another day. Um, God, I'm grateful, God, for all that you have done for me, all that you have blessed me and my family with. God, right now I'm praying, God, for fathers all over this world. God, I'm asking that you would continue to give them strength, God. God, I'm asking, God, that you would continue to give them courage, God. Give them wisdom this morning, Father God. Lord, right now I pray, Lord, for um, this world, God. I pray, Lord, for... Um, what people are going through right now, sickness, injustice, God. God, let your presence be known, God, right now in this place. God, use this broken vessel. God, speak through me, God, so that people can hear your voice and not mine. God, I need you right now. God, I need you, God, to preach through me. God, as I always ask, as I decrease, I pray right now that you would increase. It's in the mighty name of Jesus, and it's only through Jesus' name we are allowed to pray. And the body of Christ responded by saying, amen. Well, come on and give God a hand of praise in your homes this morning. As I always say, this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. There is a word today, fathers, on this great Father's Day, and it comes from 1 Kings chapter 2. I'll begin at verse 1. That's 1 Kings chapter 2. And I'll be beginning at verse number 1. I'll be reading from the ESV version this morning, so you'll find these words are something similar. The Bible says, When David's time to die drew near, he commanded Solomon his son, saying, I am about to go the way of all the earth. Be strong. And show yourself a man and keep the charge of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and keeping his statues, his commandments, his rules and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do. And wherever you turn, that the Lord may establish his word that he spoke concerning me, saying, if your sons pay close attention to their way to walk before me in faithfulness with all their heart. And with all their soul, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Again, for your hearing, verse 2, David told his son, I am about to go the way of all the earth. Be strong and show yourself a man. Today, I want to speak just for a few moments on the topic, the responsibility of a godly father. The responsibility of a godly father. A prominent evangelical preacher by the name of Billy Graham, uh, he once said that a good father is one of the most unsung, unpraised, and unnoticed, and yet the most valuable asset of our society. You know, it saddens me to say that our community um, has attacked the role of fathers with such devastating force that sociologists now believe we have sentenced the next generation to disastrous consequences because of the devaluations of the role of our fathers. You see, I know that there are many great mothers out there this morning who are watching. You may call yourself superwoman. You may say that you have been holding it down for so long without a man. 
And I understand and I get that, but I need you to understand something this morning, uh, mothers, that a father or a father figure can never be taken the place of a mother. Having a good father or father figure in a child's life is essential to the building of a healthy community, of a strong community. A father is needed or a father figure is needed in a child's life. Yes, I've learned that once a father begins to understand what's their godly responsibility, that they will start to step up to the plate and fulfill the role that God has assigned to our hearts and to our hands. Yes, brothers and sisters, the responsibility of every godly father is to protect and to provide for his family. It is to lead his family and to educate his children by giving them sound advice so that they can become what God has called them to be. Yes, that's why I believe as I was reading and studying this passage, here you can find as David is nearing the end of his life, that he is giving his son Solomon some urgent instructions. Though David was not a perfect man, David messed up sometimes. David did some things that I know he wished that he could take back. But David understood right now as a father that he had a responsibility as a godly man to fulfill. Fathers, we too are not perfect. Yes, we have made some bad decisions in our lives. We have said some things that we shouldn't have said. We've done some things that we wish that we can take back. But we have done some things that we should not have done. But we must understand this morning, fathers, that is no excuse to make sure that we fulfill our responsibility as godly fathers. So I asked the question as I was reading this text. God, what is my responsibility as a father that you want me to fulfill? That's the question, fathers, that you should be asking this morning. What is our responsibility as fathers that God want us to fulfill? Well, as we hear the instructions that David gave to his son Solomon, there are several truths that we must pass on to our children before we all leave this world. One of those truths that we must pass on to our children, fathers, is the truth about life. Yes, statistics shows us that the number of children who grow up without a father in their home in the United States have reached the concerning levels. Sadly, the role of fathers has diminished and society has become more influential in the upbringing of our children today. You see, it's our responsibility as godly fathers to obey the scripture that says train up a child in the way he should go. It's not the job of the government to train our children fathers. It's not the job of our school system to train up our children. It's, it's certainly not the job of the judicial system to train up our children. But brothers and sisters, it's our job as fathers to train up a child in the way he should go. Fathers, we must teach our children the importance of making good decisions in life. Even if they are tough decisions, we must teach our children that they must always make godly decisions in their life. You know, I'm tired of fathers who are allowing their children to be um, taught by reality TV shows. I'm tired of our fathers who are allowing our children to understand life or the truth about life, about what they see on television today. But as fathers, we must teach our children about life. Yes, when we're teaching our children about life, we must be sure to teach them about the struggles of this world. We must teach them that the word of God says in John 16 and 33, in this world, you will have troubles. In this life, you will go through heartaches and pain. In this life, you're going to make some mistakes. In this life, you're going to have to make some tough decisions. As fathers, we must prepare our children for the struggles of life. David told young Solomon, he said, Solomon, I'm about to leave this world and you're going to have to be strong. You're going to have to show yourself a man. You are about to become king over God's people and you're going to have to man up right now. It's not going to be easy, Solomon, in this world. 
But you're going to have to take everything that I have given you, the word of God, and understand that you got to be courageous and you got to endure to the end. Yes, every father desires for his son or his daughter to grow up being a strong man or a woman. To be strong in this world, I, I've learned that it takes the power of the Holy Spirit. To be strong in this world, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit because life can sometimes beat you down. You see, I've learned to live in a household with a father that when a father is struggling, I understood that my father, he still pressed on. And living in a home with my father, I saw how it got rough sometimes. But my father always pushed on and, and tried to provide for his family. I saw the struggles that my father had to go through. But I'm glad that God enabled me to see the struggles. I'm glad that I was able to see how my father endured to the end. Because it showed me as a man now that if my father made it in life, that I can make it in life too. Yes, we must teach our sons and daughters that they're going to have struggles in life, we have to stop telling them that life is going to be all peaches and cream. No, you're going to have some hiccups. No, you're going to fall sometimes. It's our responsibility as fathers to teach them about the struggles of this world. But also when we're teaching them about the truth about life, not only do we teach them about the struggles of this world, but we also must teach them about the reality of death. You know, as fathers, we don't like to talk about death. You know, everyone seems to have this sense of immortality. In other words, believing that you're going to never die. But we have to let our children know that as parents, that we're not going to always be here to hold their hands. We're not going to always be here to tell them right from wrong. They got to understand that we're going to leave this place one day and they got to grow up and be strong in the Lord. Yes, fathers, we got to teach them the reality of death. That in life, we are going to die unless Jesus come back before then. Not only do we teach them about the struggles of the world when we're teaching them the truth about life. Not only do we teach them the reality of death, but we want to also make sure we teach them the certainty of eternity. The question is, are you teaching your son and your daughter's fathers about heaven and hell? You see, it's just not the preacher's job to preach on Sunday to your children about heaven and hell. It's just not the preacher's job to, to make sure that your child knows the Lord or accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But it's our responsibility as fathers in our home, as leaders in our home, to make sure that our children have secured their place in heaven. Fathers, are you teaching your children that if they don't have Christ in their life, that they're going to hell? Are, are you teaching your children that if they have Christ in their life, they will live with the Father for eternity? Are you teaching them what the Bible says about having salvation? It's your job to go home and make sure you're opening the word of God and sharing the word of God with them, making sure that their eternal salvation is secured. It's my responsibility as a father to make sure that my son or my daughter knows what thus says the Lord. David taught Solomon the truth about life. He says, I'm going away of all the earth, but you got to be strong, Solomon. You got to prove yourself a man. And as fathers, that's what we have to do. We have the responsibility to teach our children the truth about life. Another truth, fathers, that we must pass on to our children is the truth about obeying God's word. Listen to what David says right here in verse 3. He says, and keep the charge of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and keeping his statutes, his commandments and his rules and his testimonies as is written in the law of Mo Moses. Here's the reason, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. You see, David, he knew that the key to Solomon's success was making sure he knew to obey the word of God. Obeying God's word, obeying God's commandments was not nothing new. God had told Adam the importance of obeying his commands. 
God had told Abraham the importance of obeying his commands. God had told Moses the importance of obeying his command. God had spoke to David and now David, he passes the baton on to Solomon, the importance of obeying God's word. You see, the problem with our children today, fathers, is that they don't fear God. And the reason they don't fear God is because maybe we are not instructing them the importance of obeying God's word. You see, if they knew the word of God, if you're teaching them the word of God, Exodus 20 and 12 says, honor your father and mother so your days may be long on the land. You won't have children talking back to their mother and their father when they understand the word of God. Colossians 3 and 20 says, children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. When a child understands what pleases God, they will do everything they can to obey the word of God. 1 John 2, 5 and 6 says, but whoever keeps his word truly in him, the love of God is made complete. You have to teach your children to know that if they truly love God who created them, that they will do what the word says do. Fathers, we have to make sure we have to understand that our responsibility is teaching our kids the importance of obeying the word of God. And the reason why they must know the importance of obeying the word of God. Listen what David told Solomon in that same verse so that you may prosper in all that you do. Wherever you turn. You see, the fact of the matter here today, fathers, is that when you teach your your children to obey God's word, then God will bless their lives. When you continue to teach them what thus says the Lord and to follow in his ways, God will continue to bless them in ways they can't imagine. You must understand, father, it's our responsibility to give the children the word of God something they can feed on, something that will give them strength, something that will give them hope. And when they obey the word of God, God says that he's going to bless them. The final truth, fathers, that we must let our children know, it's our responsibility as godly fathers to tell them the truth about God's promises. David goes on to say in verse 4, after telling them, to keep God's commandments. He says that the Lord may establish his word that he, concern, that he spoke concerning me, saying, if your sons pay close attention to their way, to walk before me in faithfulness with all their heart and with all their souls, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. We see here that David told Solomon in this last verse here that the Lord will fulfill his word that he spoke concerning David. David reminded his son that God made promises to him. And now in some sense, those promises was now being passed down to his son Solomon. A baton was passed in this great relay race and now Solomon had to carry it forward. Yes, fathers, we don't have this same specific promise that David had, but we have a spiritual legacy to pass on to our children. We have a spiritual legacy to pass on to our sons and daughters and they need to hear that God has a plan for their life and God has a calling to fulfill in their life and all they have to do is just trust and rest in the promises of God. Fathers, we got to encourage our children that if they just remain faithful in the word of God that he's going to fulfill his promises. It's our job to teach our children We can't make our children do anything. If you understand the story of Solomon, Solomon messed up. Solomon made some bad decisions. But his father, David, I don't want you to miss this. He made sure that it was his responsibility to plant the seed. He made sure that he taught his child the truth about life. He made sure that he taught his child the truth about obeying the word of God. He made sure that he taught young Solomon the truth about obeying and understanding God's promises. It was David's last words. We find here and we capture the heart of David. 
We find here that he realized that he is about to leave this world and he did not want to leave this world without doing what God had called him to do. He did not want to leave this world without fulfilling his godly responsibility. It was David's responsibility to make sure that he gave him godly advice. And this godly advice that David had given his son Solomon was advice that would carry him through his manhood. Fathers, what are you telling your children today? What are you instructing your children to do? Are you teaching them the truth about life? Are you telling them the truth about obeying God's word? Are you teaching them the truth about God's promises? A godly father understands that his responsibility as a father is to make sure that he passes on godly advice. Well, I hope you enjoyed the message this morning. And something has been said or done, fathers, that have touched your heart, that makes you want to grow more in the Word of God. Also, if you have not given your heart to Jesus, today is a great day to do so. All you have to do is repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Come into my life so that I may follow you. Father God, I believe that you sent your son Jesus and that he died and he has risen from the dead. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, listen, the Bible tells us that if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, you are now saved. I want to encourage you to find yourself a local church. And if you don't know a church that you can attend, I invite you to come here to Mount Gillian Baptist Church, where we will make sure that you grow in the word of God. Mount Gillian would like to thank those who have been giving to the ministry. Also, if you would like to give, text the word GIVE to the number 225-224-7556. Also, if you would like to connect to the broadcasting ministry, text the word LINK to the number 225-224-7556. Hey, I'd like to just remind you that we'll be giving some news, some upcoming news on when we're going to return back to our sanctuary on next Sunday. So please tune in on next Sunday so you can know when we will be returning back to our sanctuary. I would also like to say Happy Father's Day to my father, but also all the other fathers out there. Have a good day. And I would like to say Happy Father's Day to my daddy too. <laughs> and Happy Father's Day to everyone out there. I want to remind you that Mount Gillian Baptist Church is a place where we love God and others. India, we connect with the lost. But one thing for sure, we want you to grow in the word of God. For this is a place where everybody is somebody.